Hi, my name is Jamie. This is my van, Sunny. He's a uh, 2007 Dodge Sprinter with a high roof. He's a 144 inch wheelbase. So I first got the idea for this. Um, we had lived in Denver. We were just driving up and everything back and forth to the ski resorts on I-70 and everybody knows that that's uh, not easy. So we decided that we were gonna build this uh, so that we could just kind of go and chase the powder whenever it would happen. Happened to be doing a COVID ICU contract out in New York. Just were kind of like searching for a vehicle and found one that fit the bill pretty perfectly. Went out to see it and uh, it took about two seconds to make the decision and buy it. Once I bought it, I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I know how to build it at all. Kind of just spent the next few months like planning it out, trying to make it perfect for exactly what we wanted to use it for. The nickname actually came from my grandpa who his nickname is Sonny and he's the one who taught me how to do woodworking and build when I was a kid. Taught my mom as well who still helps me with everything. And then it kind of just started uh, on the side of the road with uh, two battery powered Black & Decker tools. Just kind of built everything from inside out. So I'll start here just because this is one of my favorite parts of the van. I was looking for a heat source, especially since we spent a lot of time skiing up in cold areas. In the beginning, I didn't have the diesel or anything in mind. Uh, we kind of just used a zero degree uh, sleeping bag and uh, we would just kind of like bundle up in that at night. But really it was just like kind of hanging out in the main area that we wanted to make more comfortable. So found this product from Canada is a cubic mini wood stove and it actually takes real wood and is uh, fed by these little five by five inch pieces of wood um, in here. It was actually uh, built as one of the last pieces um, of the van build, which made it a little bit more difficult. So I kind of built um, the stand that you can see here, uh, but then had to uh, go through and cut a hole through the ceiling and then cut a hole through the roof um, to kind of vent this out. But it's nice that it's in this insulated pipe, um, everything like that. So really all I had to worry about was, uh, you know, having the heat kind of bounce off of that. So that's where I got the idea to use real brick, um, which a lot of people are kind of surprised by, but it's a quarter inch real brick um, that I kind of just like brick and mortared like right here on the wall with just like some thin set uh, to make it a little bit lighter. So yeah, set it with uh, some thin set and uh, honestly it was pretty easy to install. And uh, this we kind of just use for like more of an ambiance sort of thing. We'll uh, open up the sliding door and you can be like in bed with with it snowing outside with a fire going, which is a really awesome thing. We can't feed the stove all night to kind of keep ourselves warm. So uh, what I ended up doing was installing the diesel heater, which um, I ended up getting an adapter pipe um, so that I could run it through to the uh, normal installation point, which is uh, uh, below the passenger seat in the front and uh, comes out right through here. And I'm able to turn this. So if we have some ski clothes and stuff like that, I'll throw it on the floor here and we'll just kind of turn it and uh, turn it on so that we could uh, get the ski clothes heated and then you can kind of turn it up this way to kind of point it towards the bed and uh, heat the entire cabin. This van when I bought it was actually an old refrigeration vehicle so it already had this metal partition in it. I decided that I didn't really want to like ground out all the screws and take it out. I kind of just built around that um, and kept the wall for security reasons and then also for like insulation and to be able to completely like uh, you know, partition off the front cabin from the back to make it more like homey in the back. I had this bizarre idea to put in a sliding barn door, which seems like a crazy idea because it's got a track and everything. I was able to get from Amazon a full size uh, door, sliding door panel that you would normally use for a closet. Built the door from scratch uh, just to fit this kind of weird, um, you know, size here. And you're able to open it. It latches closed on both sides just that it doesn't slide while driving. And it opens here to the front cabin. This is also just kind of a security thing, which is locked on both sides, but it can be uh, unlocked and slid to the sides so that we can go from the back cabin to the front. So on the driver's side wall, we have like the entire kitchen. Super important to me because I love cooking on the road, um, especially like really, really big meals. So it was important for me to kind of upgrade. I used to have a two burner stove, um, switched over to a three. Uh, lots of cook space. We're able to just kind of like put this here. It's got a magnetic closure here. Keep this up, especially when we're not on level ground or anything. Um, gives you three burners here and then gives us an oven as well, which we've actually used a bit. Um, I like cookies, so, you know, love cooking that in there. For the tile, I kind of saved some uh, weight by doing peel and stick, um, which actually has worked great. It's super easy to clean, um, was super easy to install. Um, got some extra if you ever need to like, you know, uh, do any fix-ins or anything like that. We got a magnetic uh, knife block, which actually has held up really, really well. I've driven on a ton of like super four by four roads and nothing's ever fallen down, which has been awesome. 
Same with the spice rack, holds everything kind of like where I need it. Nothing's ever popped off or anything like that. Moving on over here, we have pretty much everything else, all collapsible dishes, bowls, plates, everything like that. All right, so for the overhead cabinets, um, I kind of did like custom measuring for this. So I didn't want them to be, um, you know, too deep where I couldn't cook um, over my cooktop and everything. So I kind of made them like pretty shallow. I use this uh, cargo netting so that nothing kind of falls out of it, but it holds like everything that we could possibly need up here. The material on the outside is uh, actually reclaimed barn wood um, in like super thin uh, quarter inch uh, pieces that I got from Home Depot and I was able to kind of like custom cut them in different uh, shapes and sizes to make this like jigsaw pattern, uh, just like the way it looked. For the countertop, uh, one of the biggest things when I first started building was that I wanted Live Edge. I uh, went to a local Denver supplier um, where I got this Live Edge slab that I was able to cut into several different pieces. Uh, one of the pieces I used right here, uh, super intent on uh, keeping the bark on, so I actually epoxy resined uh, the bark uh, to the um, slab of wood before sanding it and everything and finishing it, but I was able to kind of get this like block countertop. And then uh, the other half, which I'll show you in a little bit, is going to be the table. Um, and then I was able to use another piece of it for like an extended counter without taking away from uh, seating space. So I just got some uh, extendable shelving kind of bookends right there um, to make this a larger counter when I'm cooking. And then when I'm not cooking, kind of just comes down like this and you're still able to sit here and eat at this table. A lot of questions that I get talking about this like entire layout is uh, there's no sink. Um, how do we get along without that? Uh, this was actually supposed to be a sink originally um, and I opted out of it just because uh, with freezing temperatures and everything and kind of didn't want to deal with like freezing lines and buying a heater and everything like that. So we actually get along just fine without one. We have two water jugs that are in the back of the vehicle that we use for uh, just like basic washing, stuff like that. Honestly, we bought a green pan because it's uh, easy to be wiped out so we wipe out a lot of our stuff and then just toss it for the kitchen area especially for like winter stuff when we're inside um, I wanted a place that like could definitely sit down comfortably and eat without having to eat on the bed uh, so I built two benches this one underneath here houses uh, you know just extra blankets uh, Jackery power station all that stuff for like extra um, and then you're able to sit on this top pretty comfortably and then you pull this out this is the kitchen table comes out and uh, there's some space to eat on both sides Next is the fridge freezer. It's located underneath the table here. We have it uh, to slide out from underneath the bed to help save space, uh, especially with the 144. That was like super essential to me. I didn't want it to, um, you know, hang too much in the sliding doorway. So we put it on these, uh, you know, 250 pound drawer slides that had to be like kind of special ordered. These latches are to uh, hold it from, uh, you know, flying forward while driving. And they pull it out this way and it's a uh, top opening chest. So this is a 75 quart fridge freezer. So both sides can either be a fridge or one side can be the fridge and then the other side can be the freezer and you can set the uh, temperatures independently from the front. I would say that it probably lasts us like a couple weeks of uh, groceries if packed right. So that's why we uh, tend to uh, usually take stuff out of the packaging and put it in stasher bags and everything like that so we could lay it a little bit more flat and uh, optimize our space. The next question other than the sink is usually uh, how do you go to the bathroom? Um, and for this, uh, honestly went back and forth about it for a while, whether or not to have a toilet, what kind, all that stuff. Um, I didn't want to have to deal with dumping or anything like that, so I ended up uh, choosing a cassette toilet, and the easiest way to store that was in this bench right here and use it. So this is all just to like hold it while driving, but the top will flip up like this. This comes forward like this, and then that's the toilet, and then right here is the uh, bin and the storage bin. We ended up using these like tablets uh, kind of for uh, just like eating everything up and the smell and all that good stuff. This is here for emergencies and things like that. For the sleeping area, I wanted uh, to make sure that it was like a fixed sleeping area so that we had a large garage space underneath. Uh, it was important for gear storage and everything like that. We ended up going with a uh, full eight inch memory foam bed. Had to cut a little bit off the end, but uh, I'm 5'7", so I fit kind of perfectly in this space. Uh, so shaved a little bit off the memory foam on the end there. For storage, uh, definitely need clothing storage. Ended up putting it on the foot side of the bed just so that we're not hitting our head or anything like that. Storage, there's three compartments. Uh, same thing with the cargo netting and the cargo netting actually has dividers in it this is just to keep everything from uh, kind of falling out while driving for TV uh, we actually just use an iPad download shows and we're able to use this extendable arm uh, that kind of comes out sits the iPad right here so that we can see it in bed
Last but not least, kind of like all the storage in the back, which actually we use a ton for everything. So we have the entire solar setup and batteries and everything like that for the electrical system is like right underneath this, the passenger side here. Underneath there, we kind of have like some storage for charcoal and everything that we use for the Dutch oven, anything that we use to make a fire. Uh, extra sleeping mat for uh, if we ever sleep outside or anything like that. Firewood storage up here. These are the water tanks um, that we use for just like drinking water and washing water, all that good stuff. On the back two doors, that's where we store all of our ski stuff in the winter. So each side is able to accommodate one set of skis and one snowboard. So we'll have like a full resort setup and then we'll have a full backcountry setup as well. I want to thank you guys so much for uh, checking out my van and uh, doing a little tour with me. Hope you guys follow us on our travels. The Instagram is uh, sunnysideup co for colorado and uh hope to see you on the road sometime i hope you enjoyed that video if you hadn't noticed we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van it has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project but i really believe and i've seen it time and time and time again that with the right information anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.